quick brown fox jump over the lazy dog. It's where we all begin. Welcome to Lazy Dog Typewriters. Howdy folks and welcome to Lazy Dog Typewriters. What you see before you is a 1960 Empire Skywriter. It's not an Empire Corona and it's not a Smith Corona. It literally is the very last of the Empire. And we talked about the Empire, which was the British Typewriters Limited uh, company in our review of a previous Empire Baby, which was uh, Empire Corona at the time, very briefly. It had the same lovely green, mint green hammered finish that this one has. But this one is a Skywriter. It's kind of a proto Skywriter because it doesn't have any markings to indicate that it is a Skywriter other than the um, serial number, which we can zoom in on here and see if we get really close and see if you guys can see that. We see the 4Y and then a 513276 with a W. And I'm pretty sure that the W doesn't stand for George Bush, but it stands for West Bromwich because the Smith Corona Company had just purchased the British typewriter company in West Bromwich. And they did it pretty much for this purpose, which was to kill off the Empire Baby and switch that production capacity to making Skywriters. And that's what we see here. This is 1960. In about the next 12 to 9 to 12 months, the Empire logo was removed from the Skyrider and it became Empire Corona. And then not long after that, just Corona and the Empire uh, hit the ash heap of history, as it were. But they continued making machines in Britain for a number of years, presumably because production costs were lower and or efficiencies were higher until they weren't and then they shut them down. But back to this machine, it's a very portable machine. It's, uh, its main distinguishing characteristic over the regular Skyrider is of course its finish and its interesting empirical name. We don't have a dedicated one key or exclamation mark, which was very standard at this time. It has an American keyboard layout. This machine uh, hailed from Canada. I'm not sure how it got up to Canada because it uh, doesn't have any French characters. It's purely an American key set made in Britain, as we mentioned. Um, Straightforward features. We have, unlike some Skyriders, the earlier Skyriders had a very short uh, carriage return arm. This one has a full arm. Little footnote, by the way, you can replace one of these arms with a Corsair uh, arm, and uh, as if you want a longer arm. We have an integrated uh, page gauge. We have an integrated ruler. Over on the right hand side, we have our paper release lever. And then we have our, just out of view, but we have our carriage release lever here. We have two flatten knobs, we have push to slide margins, we have no tabs, and we have kind of an interesting radio antenna pop-up paper support, which is useful and all very standard and common with the Skywriter, because that's what it is. Very small platen, and uh, just an overall quick review of a quick typewriter. Let's go ahead and take a look at a quick portable machine. Get him out of view. This is your traditional Skywriter. This is from the late 60s, excuse me, late 50s. And you can see we have the branding at first it jumps out at you. Of course, we've got our uh, crinkle coat finish. This, this might actually be one of the earlier. And the late 1949 was the last time on the 5 series that this is a metal emblem instead of being a plastic push through. I'm not sure how long they did it on the Skywriters, but it does jump out at me. Uh, they probably carried that over for a while. We have our little Tyrannosaurus Rex carriage return arm here. Um, other than that, the controls look to be pretty similar. There's a little bit of a styling difference, perhaps. But same keyboard, neat colors. Ah, this feature right here is your ribbon reverse lever. There is no line color selector on the Skyrider, at least this variant. It's simply a single color. And we have, of course, LC Smith Corona. Typewriters Inc. made in the USA. We have the same paper support, the same margins, etc. So, two very good machines. What was this machine intended for? Let's switch back to our review machine. 
Maybe if we're lucky, we can get them both in frame. I'll give it a shot. This was a typewriter that was intended to be used when you're on the go. So when you're on a train, maybe to a lesser extent on a plane, of course, that's the name, Skywriter. So let's think maybe some folks were using them on airplanes. But just a very portable machine. You have the same, same frame, same layout. It's just purely a stylistic difference with this really nice hammered and smooth finish. It's hammered, but it's slick versus the rough crinkle coat finish on the traditional Skywriter that weren't made in England. And uh, we'll give it a quick typing test and let you know what to compare it to. Pretty much this was competing against the Royalite, which was extremely uh, well sold at this time. Uh, made in Holland, which had very low production costs after World War II. And it was also competing against the Hermes Baby, of course, which is a higher, uh, perhaps, quality machine. Much sought after by collectors. Um, but this one, this Empire one, really jumps out at me for being so pretty. And we'll give you a quick test typing sample. One more comparison we thought we'd do is to compare it to a Groma Calibri, which was an extremely high quality East German um, ultra portable machine. And you can see a rather rare sample uh, on this one because it's branded with Calibri with a C and has a QWERTY keyboard. I don't know how many machines were sold under the Calibri with a C brand, uh, but we're super happy to have gotten one. And since they both came from China, China both came from Canada, uh, we thought we'd keep them together a little bit longer for this video, but this is a quick flyby of the Groma Calibri, contemporaneous with the Empire Proto Skyrider, we'll call it, just to give you a sense of how much thinner the Calibri is, probably, gosh, a full inch on this ribbon cover, so extremely, extremely thin, a very good machine. All right, let's try a typing test from a different angle. Go ahead and insert our paper. You don't have a page guide, so you just have to manually eyeball it. We're not going to worry about the page gauge, although that is a fun feature that Smith Corona has. And we'll go ahead and give it a shot. Uh, quick. Brown box jumps over the lazy dog. It's where we all begin. All right, so let's let's go ahead and take a look at that. See what you guys think. Um, descriptions of the typing touch, as I would say. Let's first look at the imprint. So the impression is quite nice. We notice that we have some interesting uh, artifacts. Okay, so the H is just a little bit low, and the A is just a tiny bit high. And then the W doesn't belong because I had a typo and missed a space. But that's me, world's worst typist. But um, I would say this has a better uh, typing feel than the Royalites do. Not quite as good as a Hermes Baby. I would put it almost directly on par with a much later variant called the Smith Corona Corsair. Um, and it has a much better overall aspect and of course a metal, bottle, metal body. So if you're looking for a quick synopsis, the pros of this machine are very sharp, good looks, all metal styling. This is unique, not unique, but very rare, probably only produced for one year, maybe a little bit less with this hammered, hammered green finish. Um, it's portable, it's lightweight, it's durable, um, it has all the features you need and none you don't. There's no tabs to mess up, there's nothing to worry about there. You don't have a dedicated one. But all in all, it's a very serviceable and good machine and interesting because of its limited history and the fact that this really was the end of the Empire. Thanks for joining us. Please like, subscribe, and share.